the presentation. Thank you so much. So, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. It is an honour to be here with you today at the Internet Governance Forum. So, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Grace Rollison and I'm a policy analyst at Tech Against Terrorism. Thank you for joining me today for our Town Hall on Global Regulation to counter terrorist use of the Internet. So, to briefly provide some background, for those of you who are not familiar with our work, Tech Against Terrorism is a public-private partnership focused on knowledge sharing and providing support to smaller tech platforms in tackling terrorist exploitation of the internet, whilst importantly upholding human rights. We work with a broad range of stakeholders, from industry-led initiatives to governments and academia, as well as civil society organisations. And we work closely with the Global Internet Forum to counter terrorism to provide mentorship to tech companies. So one of our core undertakings at Tech Against Terrorism is analysis and reflection on legal responses to terrorist and violent extremist use of the internet. So what forthcoming acts and proposals are of note, what trends can be recorded across different legislations, and what is the current state of play of legal responses to terrorist use of the internet. So, in its present condition, terrorist use of the internet is currently regulated by three different types of legislation. Firstly, there are counter-terrorism acts themselves, and these pertain to the sharing of terrorist propaganda or recruitment, as well as material support to terrorist groups. So, an example of this would be a since-repealed act of France's penal code, which outlawed consulting online public communication services through making messages, images, or representations either directly provoking the commission of terrorism or glorifying the acts of terrorism. There's also Pakistan's 2016 Prevention of Electronic Crimes Act, which similarly outlaws preparing or disseminating information with the intent to glorify terrorists or terrorism. Another type of legislation is cybercrime acts, so these pertain to cyber terrorism and the use of the internet to commit a terrorist offence. So examples of cybercrime acts include Nigeria's 2015 Cybercrime Act, Kenya's 2018 Computer Misuse and Cybercrimes Act, and Sierra Leone's 2020 Cybercrime Act. And these outlaw cyber terrorism, which is defined as a person who accesses a computer, a system or a network for the purposes of terrorism. And finally, and arguably the most complex legislation addressing online content are laws aimed at countering the spread of terrorist content and laws on illegal or harmful content. So an example of this type of legislation is the EU's 2021 regulation on addressing the dissemination of terrorist content online, or the TCO. So this legislation introduced a one hour removal deadline for terrorist content after receiving a removal order from a competent authority. It also introduced the preservation of terrorist content for six months, as well as transparency reporting, points of contact and legal representatives, as well as other measures. Another key piece of legislation is Australia's 2019 Sharing of Abhorrent Violent Materials Act. So this was introduced in the wake of the 2019 Christchurch terror attack and the act created new offences under the criminal code that require social media platforms and other websites to quickly remove abhorrent violent material and refer it to the Australian Federal Police or risk facing fines. And another final example would be India's 2021 information technology rules, which formalised what content online is prohibited in the country and allows Indian authorities to request content removal. So it's a fairly fragmented regulatory landscape and looking at some of the key regulations passed in just the last few years, examples would be the Australian and EU acts that I had just mentioned, but also in 2017, the Network Enforcement Act made Germany one of the first countries to require tech platforms to remove terrorist content within a short time frame, 24 hours to be exact. Since then, the EU has adopted this regulation mandating a one hour removal deadline. Pakistan passed the 2020 citizen protection rules, which mandate tech companies to act on removal requests within 24 hours or six hours in case of an emergency. And also India's 2021 guidelines, which introduced a 36 
hour removal deadline after being notified by the Indian authorities. And looking forward to key proposed legislation, the, e the UK's online safety bill's outcome and practical implications for tech platforms are still uncertain. But in its current form, the bill emphasises protecting children in the internet ecosystem and preventing the spread of terrorist propaganda, as well as reducing the prevalence of illegal and legal but harmful content. On terrorist content specifically, the online safety bill may require platforms to specify in their terms and conditions how they are protecting users from illegal content, addressing terrorism specifically. Canada's proposal on addressing harmful online content also aims to protect Canadians from this kind of content by requiring online communication platforms to block access to this sort of content in Canada. And New Zealand is also currently in the process of developing a new holistic regulatory framework for content moderation, with the aim to tackle harmful content across all media channels, from print to broadcast to digital forms of media. So having considered legal responses to terrorist use of the internet from recent years, and looking forward to proposed legislation, there are a number of key trends and takeaways that Tech Against Terrorism has identified. So generally, there's a lack of legislation specifically addressing terrorist use of the internet. Instead, it's addressed by legislation on cybercrime, counterterrorism acts, and laws on illegal or harmful online content. And as mentioned before, this creates a fragmented regulatory landscape. There's also a general trend with online regulation that one country will form a new type of regulation, such as the Online Safety Bill's legal but harmful framework, and other countries will replicate their own system of rules based on this new legislation framework. Countries with a more negative democratic record have been known to justify their own regulation by pointing to Western countries' regulation as an example. And when online regulations such as legal but harmful frameworks are replicated in non-democratic countries, there's a potential that risk for these frameworks to be abused and for this to have a critical impact on fundamental rights. And so democratic countries must consider the impact that their regulation can have across the globe. We also notice that existing legislation seeking to address terrorist use of the internet is largely focused on countering terrorist content and preventing its dissemination by mandating tech platforms to prevent and rapidly remove terrorist content. This neglects other important aspects of terrorist use of the internet, such as terrorist operated websites and also terrorist use of the internet for operational purposes. And when legislation does cover terrorist, terrorist use of the internet for operational purposes, it often calls for mandated backdoor access to encrypted messages and data. Regulation has been increasingly imposing short removal deadlines, so requiring platforms to remove content within a short time frame, often ranging from 1 to 48 hours following short notice from the relevant authorities. Regulation also increasingly outsources legal adjudication to tech platforms with tech companies required by law to assess whether content is illegal following a report from the authorities or in certain instances from reports from users. And this is a predominantly a trend in Europe, but it's also present in Australia's Online Safety Act. And lastly, regulation increasingly mandates transparency and accountability measures from platforms. So this has again mainly been brought forward in Europe, but also in India and Australia through requirements for platforms to produce transparency reports on their compliance with new regulations and removal of illegal content. So this brings us to the online regulation series, a centralized resource collating tech against terrorism's analysis reflective of recent regulatory developments. So since 2017 and the passing of Germany's Network Enforcement Act, which was the first regulation mandating platforms to remove certain illegal content within a set time frame, there have been many developments in the regulation of online speech and content, and in particular to our scope at Tech Against Terrorism, how we counter the spread of terrorist content online. Regulation of online speech is often complex and with many laws pioneering an ambition and scope, it can be difficult for tech companies to comprehend. So in light of this rapidly changing and complex landscape, Tech Against Terrorism decided to provide tech companies with a resource to understand the changing regulatory landscape 
and Tech Against Terrorism was the first to provide this sort of resource for tech companies on legal responses to terrorist use of the internet and online regulation. So together this forms the online regulation series. We've reviewed over 100 pieces of legislation, proposals and guidelines that aim to regulate the online sphere in order to better understand the state of online regulation and implications for tech platforms. So we focus on three key questions in the online regulation series. One, what is the global state of play with regard to online regulation? Two, what are the regulatory initiatives that aim to regulate online content? And three, what are the implications for tech platforms? For the first edition of the online regulation series, we covered a broad range of regions from France, the EU, the UK, Turkey, Canada and the US, Kenya, Jordan and Brazil, just to name a few. And with the second online regulation series, we made the decision to focus on sub-Saharan Africa with the general intention to make the online regulation series less Western focused going forward. We broadened our scope in the second edition to include 11 new countries such as Poland, Mauritius, Nigeria, Uganda and others. And there are some statistics in the bottom left there of the first and second editions of the online regulation series. So we covered over 60 regulations and legislative proposals and analysed 18 global jurisdictions. The third online regulation series will be published in January 2023 and will mostly provide updates on countries previously covered, which is reflective of the regulatory landscape. So here we have a visualisation of the countries we have covered and our expansion in the second and third editions of the online regulation series. With regards to methodology, sometimes high profile legislation that is being proposed or coming into play can make it obvious when deciding what to include in each edition of the online regulation series. So this was the case, for example, with the United Kingdom and the European Union. But we also tried to take a look at each region and see where the key developments are. We are still a small team and the regulatory landscape is constantly changing. So forming part of our selection process, we opted to focus on legislation that can have a direct impact on online counter-terrorism or counter-violent extremism efforts for now, due to their focus on online content governance. So we do not assess legislation or proposals that cover, for example, just data privacy. Though these are important in their own right, we specifically focus on online counter-terrorism, but we do aim to keep going and keep expanding with every year. All of our analysis on online regulation and our handbooks can be found on our knowledge sharing platform, which is free and easily accessible for tech platforms, policymakers, civil society, and so on. And our knowledge sharing platform also includes a legislation table which tracks online regulation and notes key takeaways directly relevant for tech platforms. So, having assessed some of the general trends in the online regulatory landscape, Tech Against Terrorism has identified a number of key concerns as well as recommendations for governments and policymakers when countering terrorist use of the internet through online regulation. One of our major concerns is the focus on big tech or big tech myopia and a lack of consideration for smaller tech companies. This is particularly problematic with regards to terrorist content since most terrorist groups exploit smaller platforms for their practical constraints on their capacity to be proactive due to their lack of resources or less sophisticated content moderation systems. By drafting legislation with larger platforms in mind and sanctioning smaller platforms instead of offering them the support that they need to counter the threat, there is a concern that public policy will have a counterproductive impact on the problem. This also risks disproportionately affecting smaller platforms financially and risks harming tech sector competition and innovation, as only larger tech companies would have the resources necessary to ensure legal compliance or to pay fines. Another key concern that we have is for the effectiveness of online regulation. Terrorist actors are sophisticated in their use of technology and have shown resilience in exploiting online platforms, whether that be to disseminate content, recruit, to raise funds or to organise. For instance, terrorists often rely on a multi-platform approach to content dissemination, 
using file mirroring services and uploading content simultaneously across multiple platforms. However, the complex and fast changing strategies deployed by terrorists are all too often absent from the debate and the legislative drafting of policy. In practice, this means that the focus of regulation is often misplaced and it fails to rise to the challenge posed by terrorist use of the internet. Also, when policymakers consider the removal of safe harbour protection for tech platforms to hold either providers or their employees liable in law for user-generated content, they misplace the burden of responsibility for terrorist use of the internet. This exposure to liability penalises those acting to counter terrorist content rather than the individuals responsible for sharing it, and thus ignores the root causes of terrorist propaganda and use of the internet. Another key concern is increased outsourcing of adjudicative functions to private and largely unaccountable tech companies. So this is predominantly a trend in Europe, but it's also present in Australia's Online Safety Act, notably by including provisions requiring platforms to assess whether content is illegal and to act accordingly. International human rights standards require that the acceptability of limits to freedom of expression should be decided by independent judicial bodies. By mandating tech companies to remove content at scale, many online regulations designed to counter online harms instead shift the responsibility of deciding what is harmful or illegal onto private entities, which risks undermining due process and the rule of law. We also have concerns around short removal timeframes and the impact that this can have on freedom of expression. Notably, pl platforms compelled to remove content within a short time frame are at risk of penalties and further liability. And this artificial choice between rapid content removal or hefty fines means that platforms will lack time to properly adjudicate on the legality or harmfulness of content, and they're likely to err on the side of over removal to avoid financial risk. This threat of fines can also incentivize increased reliance on automated content moderation. And our last concern is that in practically broad definitions of harmful content and circular explanations of terrorist content rarely indicate to tech platforms how to operationalize these definitions in practice. This presents serious risks for freedom of expression as regulation could be used to pressure tech companies to remove legal or non-violent speech. With vague definitions of legal but harmful content, countries are introducing re mechanisms that risk undermining the rule of law by criminalizing speech online that is legal offline. So to balance some of these concerns, Tech Against Terrorism have compiled key recommendations for governments and policymakers to consider when formulating legal responses to terrorist use of the internet. Firstly, to safeguard the rule of law. One way that this can be done is by ensuring that definitions of key terms such as terrorist content are clear, practical and have basis in existing legal frameworks. This can also be done by avoiding introducing regulation that depends on subjective interpretations of harm, as these can be difficult for tech companies to implement at scale without negatively impacting freedom of expression. Also, to refrain from criminalising off online what is legal offline. Governments should provide a clear legal basis for requesting platforms to remove content, including through existing counter-terrorism laws and terrorism designation lists, which are critical to informing platforms' counter-terrorism approach. Also, to pr protect the freedom of expression in line with international human rights standards by reserving adjudication on its lawful limits to an independent judiciary. And lastly, to provide le legal certainty to tech platforms by clarifying how regulatory compliance will be assessed and by providing guidance on the specific steps companies should take to comply with legal requirements. Secondly, we urge governments to honour commitments to due process when implementing online regulations. So to provide transparent accounts of the steps taken by regulatory bodies in the exercise of their authority. This allows for public assessment of the extent to which these bodies are fully aware of the risks to human rights and freedom of expression associated with content moderation measures and information requests. That they're consistent in their application of the law and free of political bias when making removal orders. That they're consistent and accurate in issuing penalties, 
free of incentive to be overzealous in moderating content and important that, importantly that they are accountable for their operational assessments and judgments. And lastly, to clarify safeguard and redress mechanisms for users by stating what safeguards are in place to prevent the removal of legal content and how erroneous removal can be remedied, particularly when this has been requested by a, a country's judicial or governmental authority. We also urge governments to encourage transparency and accountability. So commendably, the majority of online regulation introduced between 2019 and 2021 include provisions that seek to increase transparency and accountability from the tech sector. This is done through mandated detailed terms of service and community guidelines that clearly explain what is and what is not allowed on a platform and how violating content or behaviour will be actioned, which is crucial to ensuring accountability. This publicly informs users of the ground rules of content moderation and acts as a reference for users to understand why their content was removed or how to contest a removal decision if they believe it was removed in error. So in the past four years, provisions mandating platforms to have clear and detailed terms of services have become increasingly common in regulation aimed at countering illegal or harmful content. Governments can also mandate transparency reporting on counter-terrorism efforts, which provides insight into the extent to which human rights and fundamental freedoms are respected in the, on the internet in the fight against terrorist use of online platforms. And whilst we welcome government calls for increased transparency and accountability from the tech sector, we do caution against mandating transparency reporting to a uniform standard across platforms as this would disregard the diversity of services offered and the differences in resources and capacity. We recommend that governments support our guidelines for transparency reporting on online counterterrorism efforts, which focus on a small number of core metrics to facilitate the evaluation of performance over time, and which fully comprehend the importance of platform diversity. And we also do recommend that governments publish their own transparency reports on their online counterterrorism efforts and collaboration with tech platforms to counter terrorist content. We urge governments to consider the capacity and resources of smaller platforms and to uphold the principles of proportionality in regulation and equality before the law. So most regulations proposed or passed in the last four years apply indiscriminately to platforms of all sizes without consideration for differences in resources and capacity. Instead, provisions should provide realistic expectations for all platforms affected by the regulation, and they should not be applied disproportionately and punish smaller platforms. Governments should acknowledge that the difference in platforms, resources and capacities and should draft legislation accordingly. For example, by allowing more time for smaller tech platforms to adapt their processes and systems to new legislation, or by providing them with the support they need to comply. And this could be facilitated through public-private partnership endeavours and digital literacy programmes. And though some online regulation do include specific compliance requirements for larger platforms, such as in India, Turkey and France, the definition of what constitutes a large platform is not always clear. And policymakers should clarify in the regulatory framework the categorization of platform size and they should consider not only the user base but also platforms resources so human financial and technical resources in the categorization process we encourage governments to safeguard human rights by excluding excluding measures that pose a risk to freedom of expression so particularly the requirement for platforms to remove terrorist and other harmful content by a set deadline can encourage overzealous removal of content and impact negatively on human rights. We do caution provisions that do not allow sufficient time for platforms to adequately assess the legality of content, nor provide the necessary practical support for platforms to make assessments correctly. We also urge governments and policymakers to incorporate risk assessments into regulatory procedures. So understanding the threat is a crucial first step to effectively countering terrorist use of the internet and the diffusion of terrorist content online. For tech platforms, this means properly comprehending the threat that they face and the strategies employed by terrorist actors to exploit their services and to evade moderation.
Despite the obvious need for this proper understanding of the threat, we note that most tech platforms, and in particular those with fewer resources, are unable to achieve this clear understanding. So we do welcome regulatory provisions highlighting the importance of conducting risk assessments, which can be of critical assistance to tech companies. Governments should also conduct public risk assessments to review and address the potential negative and counterproductive implications of the regulation. So risk assessments should be made for the probability of threat actor adversarial shift or displacement as opposed to the disruption of terrorist activity online as intended. Also for risk to human rights and fundamental freedoms and potential negative unintended consequences. Government should also conduct an open and transparent consultation process and seek direct input from counterterrorism experts digital rights advocates and civil society organisations and should publish a summary of responses and any potential regulatory changes made as a result. We also recommend governments to balance and process outcome targets. So consistently accurate moderation of online content at scale is impossible. Regulation should account for this by placing adequate focus on both process and outcomes. Governments should consider and encourage solutions that look beyond just the removal of content. They should be realistic about outcome targets and avoid introducing regulation that assumes that removing all terrorist content without any impact on legal or otherwise legitimate content is possible. And we also call on governments to take a holistic approach to countering terrorism and violent extremism. In addition to regulating terrorist and harmful material, governments should ensure that regulatory frameworks address the root causes of radicalization and hold accountable those individuals that engage in terrorist and violent extremist activities in full compliance with international human rights standards. So in sum, the online regulatory landscape is fragmented and rapidly changing and tracking regulation on terrorist and violent extremist content is particularly difficult for tech companies as it's scattered across various different types of regulation. We created the online regulation series with this in mind to help keep tech platforms up to date and to support tech companies by providing key takeaways directly applicable for them. Overall, online regulation should be more sensitive to tech platform size and it should consider how regulation can affect small companies and can negatively impact tech sector diversity. Instead of penalising small tech platforms for their lack of capacity and resources, we should provide the necessary support in countering terrorist and violent extremist exploitation of their services. We urge governments and policymakers to consider our concerns and recommendations, in particular regarding safeguarding the rule of law, human rights and transparency. And if you do have any questions, I think I might have run out of time, but please do reach out to the email address on the screen. And thank you again so much for your time and to the Internet Governance Forum for having me today. Thank you, thank you, Grace. Um, I I have a small uh, small comment. Uh, as uh, uh, during uh, a session we had uh, previous days uh, during this IGF, uh, we we had to debate on uh, internet fragmentation, um, uh, internet uh, um, the, the 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 new era of multilateralism on the on the global. Uh, uh, diplomacy and uh, what we know, we see uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the geopardism of uh, internet. So, uh, do you think that um, we can um, regulate uh, such uh, cybercrime or uh, such uh, categorization? Because today, the the concept of terrorist can change uh, regarding the the side you 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 are. So how can we uh, regulate how can you set uh, standards on such uh, a concept uh, uh, regarding uh, the the multilateralism and the internet fragmentation we, we we are facing we we have um, one hundred on the on the room let's give uh, the the floor and uh, you can uh, answer the uh, the comment thank you is this on hi um, thank you very much uh, for this. Um, I, my name is Alex Bradbrook. I work in the UK's uh, Department for Digital uh, and previously worked on preventing terrorist use of the internet in the, uh, in the UK government as well. Um, 
I think it's a really interesting uh, uh, presentation, uh, and I think uh, it's really, obviously, there's a, a multiplicity of legislation going on across the world. I think the main thing, uh, first thing I want to kind of draw attention to is uh, the changes to the online safety bill, uh, including particularly the removal of the uh, legal but harmful measures, which you referred to in your presentation. So there have been a few changes there, so we'll be focusing much more on illegal content, such as terrorism uh, and child protection as well. Um, I just wanted to make one point, uh, which is, I think, um, obviously, there's been quite a journey in terms of legislation to tackle terrorism over the years. Um, from my point of view, I think systems and processes really is key. Um, so I think systems and processes which form the, form the heart of the online safety bill. So making sure that companies have those processes in place uh, so that terrorism, terrorist content doesn't appear in the first place. Um, so obviously, whilst the Nets DG law was pioneering in 2017, I think obviously there's been a recognition we need to do a bit more to stop it appearing in the first place. Um, Sorry, um, my question that I wanted to ask um, was, I think you mentioned why that um, more countries should legislate for terrorism in particular rather than tackling it as part of a wider set of online safety issues. Um, I just wanted to ask why, um, what, uh, why you think that, because I think from my point of view, it makes more sense to tackle uh, terrorist content online uh, with other kind of linked issues such as disinformation and other kind of, uh, illegal, con uh, other kind of illegal content as well. So um, I was just wondering if you might be able to expand on that a little. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you so much for your question, and I definitely understand that, that they are linked issues that can kind of have an impact on each other. Um, I think one of the key points is when specifically um, kind of mandating terrorism measures is that it can result in kind of depth of defining terrorism more specifically. Um, so it results, it should result in um, kind of a better understanding of what terrorism means by referring specifically to designation lists and it also just helps stop the this kind of fragmentation of terrorism being um, mandated under different under different acts which can kind of cause confusion and especially for smaller tech companies who I mentioned don't have the resources to kind of look through all those different sorts of legislations but yeah that's definitely a great great question and they definitely do have kind of a sort of impact on each other in that way. Thank you. And I should say uh, con uh, congratulations to Taking Against Terrorism for all your, your great work over the years as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have uh, any uh, reaction online on Zoom? May I invite you to open your camera to, to caption the, uh, the session because uh, I think it was the, the, the last one on the day and uh, we have more people online than uh, on site. So if you can open your camera, we can uh, have a small uh, uh, capture to I can also drop my email in the chat if anybody would like to email any questions. Um, I can follow up with them and read some feedback. That would be easier. Okay. Thank you all, and uh, I think that we can uh, we can stop at this uh, as a stage and. Uh, uh, as you said, we'll have uh, um, uh, the report and uh, all contact detail are on the uh, IGF uh, website. And uh, thank you uh, for uh, the presentation online and also for uh, how accepted me as a local moderator. Uh, I learned a lot of things and uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having us.